I'd like to start off with uh, the observation that as computing systems evolve, uh, so do their input methods. So in the very early days, we were using these primitive punch card-like things in order to, to input text and programs into computers, and this evolved over time. Uh, so, so next we had hardware keyboards uh, with a QWERTY layout that was uh, imitated from, from typewriters. Uh, we've moved on from there to have smaller keyboards uh, that fit on uh, phones like the BlackBerry. Those are now kind of going away, and the kind of standard for phones are uh, touchscreen-based keyboards, right? And now with wearable devices, it's becoming very common to have voice as a way to enter text as a convenient uh, method on, on small devices. Um, so, uh, so we envision a typing accessory uh, that's really portable and usable with computers of all form factors and mobility requirements, uh, such as a ring. Okay, so there's several ring-based uh, input devices that are all already out there, and they're great in terms of, of portability and mobility, and they're always with us. So a few examples of things out there now. Um, there's this uh, ring called the Fin. Uh, it provides a way to enter numbers and gestures uh, uh, when you wear that. There's also this other ring, uh, it's an NFC ring, um, and basically what this has is two passive NFC elements that let you kind of speed up actions on your Android phone, so when you tap this against the back of your phone, something will quickly launch. And then there's, there's others that uh, enable uh, mouse-like motions, right, so you can remotely interact with maybe a presentation screen. And finally, the Smarty Ring device, you know, might display uh, notifications from your phone. And some of you might remember, so last year, uh, I had uh, our, an energy harvesting ring paper um, that, that had other forms of, of gesture input uh, that let you, you, you could perform gestures on surfaces, right? Uh, arbitrary, just, uh, basically the idea was that you can input arbitrary characters by decomposing them into strokes and then reassembling them at the back end. But one drawback that all of these have in common is that they're not really good for entering rich, uh, rich sets of characters, right? If you want to type a lot of text, all of these might be a little bit too slow. So we introduced Typing Ring. It's a wearable keyboard in the form factor of a ring. Um, a user wears the ring on his middle finger, and you can type text with uh, three of your fingers. So namely, the index finger, the middle finger, which has the ring, and then the traditional ring finger. And you do this on a surface such as a table, your lap, or maybe on a wall. And it connects wirelessly as a standard Bluetooth smart HID keyboard, and it's over 98% accurate in detecting typed keys. And it yields a typing speed of up to 50 keys per minute, and it can yield up to around 16,000 keys uh, with a full, fully charged battery, and it weighs only about 15 grams. So typing ring, again, it's designed around typing with, th with three fingers, and so let's see how this is accomplished. So first, uh, let's assume the user is wearing it on the middle finger, and he's, he's entering text with the three fingers I described. So the user types and moves his hand around as if there's an invisible standard keyboard underneath his hand. Uh, by moving the hand uh, horizontally and vertically, a typing ring distinguishes one region from another on the imaginary keyboard. As the user hovers his hand on a surface, three consecutive keys on an on-screen keyboard are highlighted. We call this a zone, and then the process for finding that zone, uh, the zone-seeking process. And further, by pressing one of your three fingers, the user types in the key that would be under that finger. And by using embedded sensors surrounding the ring, uh, the typing ring determines what key is pressed by the user completely inside the ring and, send, and then sends the key event to a remote computer over a Bluetooth low energy communication link. So typing ring, it can be used with a variety of computing devices that support standard external wireless keyboards. There's some scenarios where a typing ring could be a better choice than the alternatives. So first, some computing devices like smartwatches and smart wristbands, they have very small sized screens where a full-scale a full touch-enabled keyboard isn't really an option, right? So sometimes your finger will almost take up the entire surface area of the screen. So typing ring can be used with these devices because it physically separates the typing action from the visual feedback, and hence the keyboard layout can be scaled down enough to just show a tiny keyboard uh, with highlighted keys, or maybe a single row of keys, or maybe you only show the current active window that you're typing on. And then typical on-screen soft keyboards on mobile devices also block out more than 40% of the display when they're active, right? So by using this ring, you could, you could diminish the size of that on-screen keyboard because you only need to see the highlighted region rather than you know, using that as the area where you're inputting the text. And then finally, this could be used for on-the-go typing or it might be inconvenient to remove a mobile phone from your pocket, for example, and maybe you have a wearable device where you can get the feedback and you could use the ring to maybe uh, send a short SMS or like a Twitter update, for example. Okay, so the hardware components of the ring are as follows. So on the top of the ring, there's two main boards. So there's a microcontroller that's used for processing uh, sensor data. 
and it determines the currently pressed key. And then there's a Bluetooth low energy radio that sends uh, the key events to the end device that you're interacting with. On the sides of the ring, uh, there's two sensors used for determining uh, the proximity of the fingers adjacent to the middle finger. And then under the ring, there's a sensor that uses the same principle as an optical mouse sensor. So this provides the displacement of the ring on the X and Y axes of motion on the surface. So inside the firmware of the ring, we have three layers of software. So first, there's a sensing layer, and it uh, reads and stores three types of sensor readings in a bounded circular queue. Uh, second, uh, there's a finger and gesture recognition layer that implements algorithms to determine the three-letter zone, uh, the finger that was used for typing, and then uh, uh, also a 3D gesture. And then finally, a logical mapping layer that maps the fingers and gestures to keys and then generates and sends key events over the communication link. So typing with the ring, it involves two phases. So first, the user seeks for a zone, uh, followed by making a typing gesture. So to enable this, the ring maintains a state machine, which is shown in the figure here. So first, uh, the hold state is the resting state of the ring. It acts as an intermediate state between the seek and the typing phase. The seek state is entered when the user starts dragging the ring on the surface while keeping his fingers close to each other. Uh, so the user isn't currently making any typing gestures, but just finding a zone. And this is where the zone seeking and zone update happens as the amount of drag in a vertical or horizontal direction uh, goes above a threshold. And finally, the type state is entered when the user lifts up one or both of his fingers, um, indicating an intention to type. This state runs the typing gesture detection algorithm to determine what finger is being used to do the typing. Okay, so here we show how the typing uh, finger detection algorithm works. So the problem of typing finger detection is stated as, so given periodic proximity and accelerometer sensor readings over an interval, uh, what is the probability of making a typing gesture with one of the three fingers? So this is done by uh, quantizing the raw sensor values. Uh, so the sensors we're using, are, there's a left proximity sensor, an accelerometer on the finger that contains the, the, the ring, and then uh, a right proximity sensor. And we quantize this to three levels um, with three sensors, gives us 27 different emissions uh, from, from the set of sensors. And then to classify a sequence of such emissions over a period of approximately one second, um, we use a three-state hidden Markov model, which is trained offline. And once we get the likelihood of the sequence uh, being generated by the three-state uh, three HMM, the maximum value gives us the likelihood class, or the, the most likely finger that's used, that was used to do the typing. Uh, so one nice feature of typing rings, so we've added these things called gesture shortcuts. What these are, so we provide a simple 3D gestures where the user rotates his hand around one of the three axes of movement, and then we map these gestures to a set of commonly used keys. So that could be the space bar, for example, maybe backspace if you made a mistake, or the enter key. And we use a very simple threshold-based algorithm to distinguish between these roll, pitch, and yaw gestures. So we plot the three-axis accelerometer readings. Uh, we notice that for pitch, we have almost no variance in the x-axis, while the other two axes show variance. And then the similar trends are true for uh, yaw and roll as well. So one of the axes will show, will show no variance, but the others will. And that's how we can distinguish between each of those motions uh, easily. So we implemented uh, the typing ring using off the shelf, the off the shelf tiny Duino platform. So the top portion of the ring consists of a stack of three tiny Duino boards. There's a microcontroller, a three axis accelerometer, and a blue giga, a Bluetooth low energy radio module. And the side proximity sensors, they're IR line sensors that have a three millimeter sensitivity. And there's a displacement sensor underneath that's actually implemented using a low power optical mouse sensor. And the total weight of the ring is again about 15 grams. So the communication link is actually built on top of standard primitives that are implemented in Android and, and uh, iOS, for example. Um, and so what this is, so it's, it's called the uh, HID over GET profile, where basically this means that you can have a keyboard that implements Bluetooth low energy. And what happens here is when we detect a certain key is pressed, we actually send this as a standard HID key report. So there isn't any modification required on the end device to receive the keystrokes. This is handled by the operating system, and you don't need any special software. To update the zone that the user is typing in, um, we send a hidden keystroke value uh, that, that won't actually appear as text on the screen. So for, for example, this could be Alt plus one or Alt plus two to shift the zone to the left or to the right. So that allows the user to have real-time feedback as they move around their hand. And then for visual feedbacks, we provide two different types of visual feedback. So we either provide a full keyboard that's scaled to a suitable size so that you aren't consuming most of the real estate of the screen. And also for tiny screen devices, this could just be a, a three key uh, window uh, for visual feedback. 
So we've performed three types of evaluation for typing ring. So first, we have a set of system measurements where we measure the execution time and the energy consumption of the platform. So second, we have an empirical evaluation where we collect raw sensor data for analysis and it allows us to do parameter tuning for the algorithms. And then finally, we have a user study where we evaluate the performance, uh, for example, the typing speed you can achieve on the ring and, and things about the user experience. Okay, so this figure, it shows the measured execution time of the seven major system components. Among all the comp computational modules, the hidden Markov model classification uses the highest amount of execution time of around seven milliseconds. While combining all other tasks, the total computation time uh, still remains less than 10 milliseconds. So the Bluetooth low energy send operation by itself consumes seven milliseconds. And this is denoted by the duration of time uh, between uh, when our, our uh, machine learning uh, uh, module uh, generates a key event and when it is actually sent out by the radio. And then it takes an additional uh, four milliseconds to get the acknowledgement back that the end device has received the keystroke. So overall, the system has an end-to-end -end execution time of about 20 milliseconds per keystroke uh, for making a typing gesture, uh, including getting back the acknowledgement. So next, we show the energy consumption per key in this figure. So from our empirical data, we get the fraction of time each of these components are active when typing a key. And by multiplying the power uh, to an average keystroke length, we can obtain the energy values used by the system. So please note that not all the sensors are active all the time in typing ring, so the power and energy won't be linear. Uh, with this energy profile and a coin cell battery of approximately 125 milliamp hours, uh, typing ring is lifetime, it's about 15,000 keystrokes, and if you assume approximately one second per keystroke, the lifetime of the ring, uh, while it's continuously used, will be about around four hours. So we perform an empirical evaluation uh, to collect data for offline analysis and, look and, and tune uh, the algorithm's parameters. So we collected empirical raw sensor data and ground truth uh, from 18 participants, and each person types 50 random characters, five to 15 phrases, and they make 30 of the, of the gestures that I described earlier. And they're shown on a full on-screen keyboard for visual feedback as the user is, is trying this out, like the one shown on the right. And the sensor data was streamed from the ring uh, to the computer over a USB at a 100 millisecond interval. Okay, so we then train and test three types of classifiers for finger detection. So we use the empirical data set in all three classifiers. So for the hidden Markov model, we used 1,000 training iterations and randomized transition and emission matrices. For the decision tree and native Bayesian, we use quantized sensor values as features. The experiments are repeated at least 10 times, and 70% of the examples are used for training, and then the remaining 30% are used for tests. So this figure compares the accuracy of the three algorithms in detecting the typing finger. So of the three, the hidden Markov model performs the best with an average accuracy of almost 99%, and that's around 20% higher uh, compared to the other two. And the main reason for the HMM to, do, to perform better than the other two is that it considers the sequence of states, and each state is formed by taking all combinations of the three sensors into account. On the other hand, the, na the naive Bayesian classifier assumes independence of all three sensor types, which is not true in our problem. The decision tree classifier, on the other hand, it assumes that all variables interact with each other, which is also not quite true in typing ring. So the left and right proximity sensors, for example, are mostly independent of one another. So the decision tree also suffers from overfitting of the training data. This figure compares the classification error, false positive rate, and the false negative rates of four different uh, hidden Markov models. So the number after the HMM denotes the number of hidden states that are used. So we observe that a three-state hidden Markov model is the best among the four, having the lowest error rate of around 1.3%, uh, with less than 1.5% false positives and false negatives. HMM3 is better than two because it's more expressive and capable of encoding more information. However, uh, HMM4 and five are not better than three because of their tendency to overfit training data and then failing to recognize unknown examples from the test set. And this figure shows the accuracy of our gesture recognizer for various sampling intervals of the accelerometer. So we observed that up until 400 millisecond sampling interval, the classifier's accuracy remains 100%, and then it starts to drop off. So that indicates that 400 milliseconds might be the, uh, the right value to use for the set of users that we tested against. So we performed a user study to quantify the typing speed of the participants and their experience. Uh, so the 18 participants uh, in the study uh, did two separate sessions, each lasting 10 to 15 minutes. So for text inputs, we used concatenated phrases uh, from the McKenzie set, 
and we allowed deletions, corrections, and gesture shortcuts. The user was given a full keyboard visual feedback and no auto corrections were done. So we used two baseline solutions. The first is an on-screen soft keyboard of an Android smartphone, and then the second, uh, a Windows 7 on-screen keyboard where a user types by clicking a mouse. So this figure shows typing speed in terms of number of correctly typed keys per second um, for each user and for each of the three methods of typing. And we observed that the typing speed on a soft keyboard is the highest with an average speed of about 100 keys per minute. And this is about 2.4 times higher than what we achieve by typing rate. Typing ring speed, however, is comparable to that of the mouse-based on-screen keyboard. And for some users, uh, the typing ring speed is almost the same um, as that. And on average, the ratio is 0, uh, 0.88. And overall, typing ring yields about 41 keys per minute, which is roughly about the first four users, we see a dramatic reduction in typing time by 4.5 to 8.6x. And further inv investigation reveals that the for the most part, the improvement comes from reducing the seek time. This is intuitive since zone seeking is more time consuming than actually making the typing gesture, and it also requires some practice to coordinate between the ring movement and the visual feedback. And from our experience with end users, uh, we noticed that those who took time to practice before telling us that they were ready for the session were the ones who achieved the best results. So I'd like to conclude uh, with uh, some uh, feedback from our users after they were after they're done with our study. So at the end of our study, we asked the population of, of, uh, of the 18 users how they feel about the size, the weight, the portability, the usability, and the visual feedback of the ring. And we also asked them if they noticed any difference in their own performance between two sessions and their feeling about the ring to become a replacement for other text input methods on mobile computers. While overall the scores are good, uh, here's a few findings. So everybody seemed to love the visual feedback. Uh, everyone felt that the system was easy to use. Um, with practice, uh, they felt that they were doing better. Several of them thought it was fine for typing, but they might not want to wear it all day long. Some of them complained about the size, as it's larger than a typing a typical ring. And finally, the last concern, uh, there was a concern raised by multiple users, was about, it was about the flat placement of fingers in the palm on a surface to make typing ring work. So this required some practice for the users to get used to the new platform. So that concludes my talk, and at this time I'd be happy to take any questions you might have.